Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. It is now March 29th of 2024, and given that every single division over at the Walt Disney Company is going through a major struggle right now, not just limited to Bob Iger's lack of leadership skills and his push for DEI, as well as his cost containment plan, but a lot of it has to do with false promises that were made with many different projects associated with, of course, Marvel Studios and Lucasfilm. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. So, the Acolyte, we know that this is the very first Star Wars project or Star Wars TV series in this situation that has received ratios across the board, all right, all over social media. We know that this is making Star Wars history in a negative sense and really a major sign that fans are finally fed up with what Kathleen Kennedy has been spewing over the past number of years. I think that the Acolyte finally serves as a show that really just serves as a symbol that fans are done with this franchise. They are moving on finally. They want nothing to do with it for the most part. Of course, you're going to have some fans that will give this series an actual chance. But as for me, I have really no hope for Star Wars for anything in the near future. Everything in the lineup looks like it's going to be a disaster. And focusing on the Walt Disney Company, we know that Bob Iger is using many individuals to head into damage control to protect the Acolyte. Let's get into all of this and how it does indeed involve Joy Behar, one that knows nothing about Star Wars and nothing about the fans. Now specifically, of course, on top of all of this, with all divisions at the Walt Disney Company showing no signs of improvement, especially for 2025, one major development has to do with Joy Behar and her stance on the Acolyte series. Once again, after the ongoing trailer backlash, as Disney begins to use any face possible to enter into damage control for the series, Behar delivered the following. As a woman and one that knows many in this business, I don't care if you are in comedy or in show business generally, doesn't matter, but being a woman is very tough, especially in the film industry and everything with television and I think that what Lucasfilm and Disney understands and that's what and that's why they are moving forward quite well with their series called The Acolyte. Now again, I have been clear about this before. I don't know anything about Star Wars, but what I can tell already about this show is that it seems to be a bother a large demographic, specifically males that are seemingly afraid or fearful of these changes, of these powerful female-driven roles in a show as big as this. As far as I know, Star Wars, of course, never had an all-female-led cast that was created by women, and I'm glad that Kathy, who runs the show over there at Lucasfilm, is providing women a chance to make their voices heard in a show like this that I'm sure will resonate with many fans and will even create more fans. You see, as one who knows how big Star Wars is, I think George Lucas really made the mistake of not catering to such a large demographic. I mean, there are so many women out there that could get into this brand, but when it's only made for men, like it's not going to work, it's just not. That's why I think men are getting this feeling of their childhood getting invaded or something when they realize change is coming with this show. And look, I may not know Miss Hedlund all that much, but I would and plan to have her on the show. We have been making arrangements to talk about how important this really is for diversity, for equality, and everything, and I think our audience will really appreciate something like that. We have needed a filmmaker like this for a very long time. Someone like Leslie has been long overdue to handle a franchise as big as this one. You see, with that other show, I think it was called Ahsoka, the problem there was it may have been a female-led show, I mean, I just love Rosario Dawson, but that show wasn't made by women. So this acolyte thing is the first of its kind. What Disney has been doing is something that I think is very needed in this day and age. It's time for women to get their roles that they may have never been able to get just a couple of years ago, and know they are able to do that. Now, guys, let me just stop here for one moment about what Joy Behar is spewing. Now, this is no different than what she was talking about when the sequel trilogy was getting destroyed back in 2019 when everything wrapped up with The Rise of Skywalker, when fans were looking back at the past couple of years at that point from 2015 onwards. 
all right, until 2019, which was Kathleen Kennedy's era of really destroying the Star Wars films, right? We have not seen a Star Wars movie since then. It's crazy how long it's been, right? Time just flew right by. Now, 2020, 21, 22, 23, and now 24 passing through, that's five whole years altogether of no Star Wars films. 2025, no Star Wars films at all. So it's going to be six whole years without a Star Wars movie. And then in 2026, they're coming back with a Ray movie. Are you kidding me? That's exactly why fans are fed up with people like Kathleen Kennedy. And that's why they're also fed up with the Acolyte series. And this is exactly why you have people associated with Disney like Joy Behar saying this nonsense, equality this, equality that, powerful female roles, this and that. That's not what it's all about. You know, look, we all support, you know, equality and whatnot if it comes naturally within the script. But when you focus on that, and when your mind is set on that, you're not going to have a proper story. I mean, this is how it works, right? You're not going to do a good job on the script. You're not going to do a good job on the plot when you're focusing on DEI and all of that nonsense that Disney loves to just cram into these projects. Now further, she goes on to conclude, and from what I heard, there are just a small number of fans that are already shouting about this project and making all types of noise, and it's just offensive and unfair to the creators behind this series that holds the opportunity to normalize something valuable in this industry to finally provide women a chance in this business. Personally, I think this will bring Disney on the right path that they have been searching for the past number of years. I know they tried it with Marvel, but I think they will get it right with this one and show everyone who is right. It's going to be inspiring for actresses all around the globe. Now again, you have people like Behar, you have people like on the Good Morning America show, the hosts over there that defend everything Disney Star Wars, Disney Marvel. They are the very individuals that literally defended the Marvel's box office disaster back, I think it was in November. It really just goes to show you that this overall move by Disney is just nothing but desperation. Someone like Joy Behar who knows nothing about this franchise and is already somewhat snubbing George Lucas and disrespecting him as if he was guilty of intentionally excluding women from Star Wars, which wasn't the case. We've always had people, you know, in there. We had Leia for a great example, Padme Amidala. I mean, I don't know where they're getting these from, but they seem to forget that we've had powerful roles like that in Star Wars from the very start. Now, again, Joy Behar is a major face of Disney, all right? She will defend them through and through because she knows that Disney is her bread and butter because she's got the view. The view is basically her, you know, void <laughs> to shout through because no one's really watching, not, you know, a different demographic at least. The only demographic that tunes into the view are people that love to listen to all of that nonsense, that love to listen to Disney's ideology and everything over at ABC. So again, the Acolyte series, guys, I would love to hear what you all have to say about the ongoing drama surrounding this show. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys later. Yeah.